not violate the code of ethics, he violated the First Amendment in a couple of ways. Generally, a person cannot be held liable, either criminally or civilly, for anything written or spoken about a person or topic. So, as long as it is truthful or based on an honest opinion and such statements, which all of it was not. Photographs can also cause great harm if they are intrusive. However, the writer wanted to find relief and closure without violence. Although we strongly believe this, in fact, did violate the First Amendment, the man most definitely represented in the tragedy, represented the tragedy as a whole. So everything we look at today has a picture. Like when we see like M and M's, we know that they're little characters, you know. So it's a logo, and th I guess that he kind of wanted to give this day a logo, like something that the man that people would remember when they look at this photo, they automatically go, the tragedy of 9-11. But, however, <clears throat> we believe that it did violate, but however, it did not violate the First Amendment. Um, based on the code of ethics, rule number one is accuracy. It says be accurate and comprehensive, or yeah, comprehensive in the representation of subjects. He he thought it was the one guy, but it was not the guy that he thought it was. So he made everybody believe that it was one guy when in fact it was not. So he misrepresented him and made his family think that it was him and he was dead, and that he, you know, committed suicide. But his family did not believe that. But in their hearts, they probably, deep down, they probably keep thinking this, that he did. They don't know. Um, number four is to treat subjects with respect. Um, he kept going to the family and saying, I'm going to publish this. You know, your son, your husband, your father jumped off of this building. He committed suicide. And the family did not want to believe that um, I also the family was refusing because emotions were really high at this time. You know, a lot of people were sad and just really mortified that anything like this could happen on American soil. You know, and the family did not want to believe that he had did that because of their religious beliefs. Um, so they. You know, refused to believe it. I think one daughter said that she wanted to believe it, but she didn't want to go against her mother in it, but she just doesn't know. <clears throat> also, number 10 <clears throat> states that, oh my bad, number 3 says, be complete and provide context. So he was just trying to get everything right. He wanted, people wanted answers for this. Why did this happen? And I think he was just trying to do that by this guy. He kind of went about it the wrong way, but, you know, he, he went to the family. He did what he was supposed to do. He went to them. He talked to them. He still published it without their consent. That was wrong, but he did, you know, what he was supposed to do. He was complete, thorough. And um, some people would say that it violated the freedom of religion. So in the article, it doesn't really say anything about he had this certain belief. So I don't really think that would be violating the freedom of religion. But he did go against what the family said because they were Catholic. So that's where they would get that. But I don't think that he did violated because he never really published anything saying that he was Catholic, you know, this was his religion. And the um, freedom of speech that they could say it was violated because the family did not want it to be published.
didn't violate it because he didn't say in his article, you know, the family did not want me to publish this, but I did it anyways. So, I think.